think my day might be a little bit different than the rest of the staff at times, not every day, but there's a lot of meetings with head coaches, there's a lot of meetings with administration, uh, phone calls with parents, uh, physicians, coordinating some things at times. Uh, so out of the 450 athletes, uh, the 100 that I primarily take care of are football. However, with every, all the other athletic trainers that are there, if another athlete has an injury or something occurs, I'm usually updated um, and I'll be in contact with that athletic trainer and that physician. And in most cases, if it's a significant injury, then I'll be in contact with the administration. So I'm a conduit in many different directions with communication. Not that I have to be every time, but it's just something that I'm expected to follow up on. My passion for athletic training started in high school when I was a senior. I worked with uh, our school's athletic trainer and kind of helped her set up for games and you know going over injuries and modalities and different like special tests and stuff and talking about you know rehabilitation. Um, that's when it started for me and I was like I could really do this you know for the rest of my life. I knew I didn't want a desk job and to sit all day on a computer. I wanted to be hands-on, um, talking with people, helping make a difference. It's no different than what a lot of people do in their daily job. Just take that and amplify it a little bit in the sense of there has to be clear, concise communication because you're dealing with people's health. And in a lot of cases, just like for all of us, if we go to our physician and we're not feeling well, we do want to have some sort of immediate response by that doctor we want to have, some labs done we need to have, x-rays done we need to have, something done to feel as if we're progressing or moving towards uh, an answer. Uh, it's no different in sports medicine. Uh, in sports medicine at times it's uh, almost increased because there's such a timeline. This is a industry that's driven by performance. And so we have to make uh, decisions based on protecting the athlete and their health, not just for now, but for in the future. In addition to when can we get them back out on the field, the court, on the ice, and perform, because that's what most of them are driven to do. So because of all those factors, we move a little quicker. Uh, we might do an MRI two weeks, three weeks, four weeks earlier than the average person might get an MRI. We might do an x-ray immediately that day that somebody might wait a, a day or two to have done therapy starts immediately and that could be two or three times a day whereas somebody might go in the general public for therapy one or two times a week that could be a daily occurrence with our student athletes so everything's really ramped up and trying to go as fast as we can. Game prep usually starts like the night before um, I'll go into the cross center and set up all the coolers and um, the locker room um, treatment tables um, and then bring down like the AED and the docs bag. The next day I'll set up the ice chests and the water bottles for the team. Um, I'm usually there like an hour before they arrive so that way everything is set up and ready to go so when they get there I'm hands-on for them whatever they need to do. It's fun. It's a great energy and a great atmosphere to be in during game day because everyone is fired up and it's great to see them, you know, the athletes perform and do what they love to do. Everything that we do has its own set of challenges um, and I think just being mentally prepared and being adaptable and willing to communicate are like the main things that you need to be able to overcome like any challenge that we face. Working with different personality types and seeing um, how everyone doesn't always see things through the same light um, is definitely probably one of the major challenges that we face. Um, I mean, we're here for student athlete um, health, not only right now, but longevity wise too. I have witnessed some pretty tragic uh, injuries over the years and watching someone go through something that um, let's say could be potentially career-ending and and watching them deal with things like that those are the most difficult the, the hardest part of the job is when we have to medically disqualify an athlete uh, when we have to shut them down for a season when we may have to say uh, you know we're, we're gonna have to take a break for a while we keep an open mind to okay this can help you now 
but is it also going to be beneficial five, ten years from now too when you're trying to live a life outside of being a student athlete? So I think just working with different people and trying to, you know, push that idea onto them too that like it's more than just now, it sometimes can be a challenge. The most rewarding part is when you see that person who come in who's in pain, discomfort, they, they're losing something. So you have to understand that every time somebody walks into the door to our office, there is some level of discomfort that they're having, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, everything, because they're not able to perform or their performance is suffering because of something. And being able to provide insight, help, direction, and then potentially the outcome being them returning at a equal to before or healthier than before level and watching them do what they love to do, that's where the satisfaction comes in. They don't have to say thank you. They don't have to do anything. That's what we enjoy doing and that's where we get our own personal intrinsic satisfaction. I truly believe that if you're gonna do something better, you gotta start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now, and that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. Girl Scout Ingenuity meets Dunkin' Coffee, you get a cup of can-do. Girl Scout cookie-inspired flavors are at Dunkin'. Try Thin Mints and Coconut Caramel today. And get a medium latte or cappuccino for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. What makes a legacy? It takes more than bravado, more than your attitude, or the face you show to the world. Your legacy is your story. The place you carved for yourself in history, and who you helped along the way. The actions you take to earn it. The things you do even when the sun isn't around to see them. Our legacy, helping you build yours. Visit fisherplows.com or your local dealer for more information. Take the guesswork out of creating your new kitchen or bath with help from the design professionals at Hammond Lumber Company's Kitchen Bath and Flooring Center. Bring in your own ideas or get inspired by Hammond's complete in-store showroom displays. Hammond's designers can show you several variations on your project with accurate 3D renderings. Hammond's design services are included when you purchase your materials from them, and of course, delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location statewide. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. This Dunkin' Latte is crazy delicious. Mm. I want to remember everything about this moment. The rich espresso, the pillowy foam. What about me? It's just weird that I'm not in there. Try our medium lattes and cappuccinos for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. at Dunkin'. My name is Brian Chopre. I'm an assistant athletic trainer here at the University of Maine. Uh, we're gonna take you on a little tour through the training room. So as you come in, kind of in our general treatment area. So this is where all the treatments and rehabs are going to be done. Uh, some things to highlight in this area. We got a lot of new modalities in the last year and a half. We've got some of these combo units that have a lot of uh, different settings of electrotherapy and ultrasound. And then we also got these uh, therapeutic lasers last year that have been helping out a lot in our rehab protocols. Um, we have the typical things you may find in every other training room. Uh, hydrocolators, hot packs for people warming up pre and post treatment, uh, pre rehab, post rehab, however you want to do that. Uh, we also have game readies, which are intermittent compression with cooling. So it's like icing with a compression wrap on at the same time. It's a pretty nifty little gadget that we got here. So as you come across the room and you're panning, uh, it's a taping area. This is where all your pre-game, pre-practice tapings happen. It's uh, anywhere from ankle taping, wrist taping, knees, hip wraps, shoulder wraps. Anything you can imagine, this is, this is probably the place that they're going to be applied. So as you can see through here, we got our cold tub area. It has two cold tub branded hydrotherapy tubs. And these are set at 50 degrees. 
constantly. And we get a lot of traffic through athletes. Uh, again, pre-game, post, or not pre-game, but uh, post-game, post-practice, it helps the soreness and, uh, and keep, our, keep our athletes going. So we'll take you over across to the private exam room we have. This is one of our uh, private exam rooms for the doctors to see student athletes for uh, various clinical needs. Uh, so we have orthopedic clinics every Tuesday morning and a general medical doctor who specializes in sports medicine comes in every Wednesday. Uh, anytime an athlete needs to be seen in private, you can utilize one of these rooms and also we use them for general doctor appointment visits, orthopedic visits, things like that. So we're going to take a little tour of the athletic training facility here at uh, Alphond Arena in the Sean Walsh Hockey Center. So this is our, our main facility for men's and women's ice hockey, uh, right down here at the basement level of uh, Alphond Arena. So we've got a, a room that's very similar to what we have for all of our other student athletes up at the Keswick Sports Medicine Center at the Fieldhouse. Um, we've got a little service counter that, um, you know, for the over-the-counter type things, the, some, you know, some of the over-the-counter meds that we use and some of the, the service items that we use on a regular basis. A um, little taping area, which looks a little bit different than uh, what, what you would see at our basketball facility or um, you know, at Keswick where we have all kinds of athletes. We don't do a lot of taping in, in ice hockey, so it's a, it's a smaller taping station. Um, and then our treatment area here, uh, brand new tables that uh, we were able to, uh, to get this year. Uh, some standard modalities, we have a laser unit um, that we use. Lasers help to normalize cellular, um, cellular function uh, and those are used a lot on chronic as well as acute injuries. Um, an electrical stim ultrasound machine uh, again used on a, a ton of soft tissue injuries. Um, in addition to manual therapy uh, you know, we use uh, soft, soft tissue mobilization techniques and uh, there are other tools, cupping and Graston technique and all those things that you may have uh, heard about uh, elsewhere are used right here in our facility for our student athletes. We've got our hydrotherapy room here and um, the, the unique uh, tool that we have here is our HydroWorks 500 series pool. Uh, that we put in when we, we did our expansion here at Alphon. It's, um, it's got resistance jets uh, and also an underwater treadmill. So this, this tool, it's a great tool to use um, you know, for conditioning, but also for uh, any lower extremity injuries. Uh, you get upper extremity injuries, you get the, uh, the buoyancy of the water, uh, which makes it a little bit easier to bear weight uh, if you've got a lower extremity injury. Um, and this is used by all of our student athletes. Uh, we've had a number of um, athletes, you know, from other other sports that have that come down and uh, get rehab sessions in here uh, in the pool. It's been a, a fantastic tool for us. This Dunkin' Latte is crazy delicious. Mm. I want to remember everything about this moment. The rich espresso, the pillowy foam. What about me? It's just weird that I'm not in there. Try our medium lattes and cappuccinos for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. at Dunkin'. I truly believe that if you're gonna do something better, you gotta start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now. And that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. When Girl Scout Ingenuity meets Dunkin' Coffee, you get a cup of can-do. Girl Scout cookie-inspired flavors are at Dunkin'. Try Thin Mints and Coconut Caramel today. And get a medium latte or cappuccino for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. What makes a legacy? It takes more than bravado, more than your attitude, or the face you show to the world. Your legacy is your story. The place you carved for yourself in history. And who you helped along the way. The actions you take to earn it. 
the things you do even when the sun isn't around to see them. Our legacy, helping you build yours. Visit FisherPlows.com or your local dealer for more information. Hey Black Bear fans, number five, Ryan Smith here. Uh, I just want to thank my family and uh, my girlfriend Carrie that uh, made it out tonight. You guys are awesome, uh, giving me the support I need in my four years here. Uh, I want to thank all the fans and Black Bear Nation. You guys have been amazing my four years and showing support every night. Uh, this place wouldn't be the same without you guys. I want to thank the coaches and staff for being there uh, all the time, uh, doing extra work, uh, putting in hours, just doing everything they can to make this program better. And uh, obviously I want to thank the boys. Uh, you guys are amazing. I've made friendships here that will last uh, my whole life. And I uh, couldn't thank you guys enough for a great experience. Hey, Black Bear fans. This is number 17, Tim Doherty. Uh, I just want to start by thanking my family, uh, my parents who are here tonight. Uh, my brother and sister couldn't make it. But uh, the unconditional love and support they've shown me the past four years, um, I wouldn't be anywhere without them. I also have my grandparents and my cousins, uh, Ryan and Mal, are here tonight. So very thankful for all those people. Next, I'd like to thank the coaching staff, um, especially Coach Red, for me, giving me a chance when no one else really would uh, coming out of juniors, and uh, it's meant the world to me. Uh, thank you to all, also all the behind-the-scenes people um, who make everything possible for us and do a lot of hard work that goes unnoticed, uh, but it doesn't go unnoticed by the boys. Next, I'd like to thank everybody in this building right now. Um, the Alphonde is the coolest rink in college hockey to play in. Um, it's such a pleasure for us to come here every weekend and play in front of you guys, the student section, um, you know, everything that makes this place so special. So thank you for that. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, the boys, um, past and present, you guys have made this whole experience everything that it's dreamt to be um, at the rink, away from the rink. You, uh, you guys gave me a, a reason to smile every day, and for that, I'll forever be grateful. Thank you. Are we all doing the Black Bear fans? You don't have to. I feel like we should say, change it up. Um, What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I want to start by thanking my family, my parents. None of this would be possible without them. I appreciate you guys and my siblings. Shout out to you guys for the support. Also, I'd like to thank my entourage that comes to all the games best fan section in the business. I'd also like to thank the boys. It's been an awesome four years here, the best four years of my life. And I made some friendships that will last a lifetime. I'd also like to thank the whole staff. I'm grateful for all the behind the scenes stuff that goes on here that goes unnoticed. And of course, the fans, the student section, you guys have made this the best atmosphere possible to play in. And it's been an amazing four years here. And then a special shout out to Jay Leach. The guy who recruited me here, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. He was the one who believed in me from the jump and goes a long way. Hey Black Bear fans, it's number 33, Stephen Mundinger. First, I'd like to thank my family who is here tonight. They have shown me love and support throughout my four years and throughout my life, and I cannot thank them enough for that. Especially, I'd like to thank my mom and dad who have not missed many games since I've been here. I'd also like to thank my beautiful girlfriend, Jill, who's here tonight and it show, also show me endless love and support, and hasn't missed anything either, has come up every weekend for me. Next, I'd like to thank the coaches and the staff. You guys put countless hours in to only better this program each day. Next, I'd like to thank the best fans in college hockey. You guys are by far the best, and it's not even close. Throughout my four years, we went to countless ranks, and nothing compares to you guys. So I thank you for that. And lastly, I'd like to thank the boys, past and present. You've made my four years here unbelievable. The memories I've made will last a lifetime, so I thank you for that. I love you guys. Hey, Black Bear fans. It's uh, Sam Renneker here. Just want to say thank you to my family, uh, my two parents that came out for the trip this weekend, um, everybody else, both my brothers, grandparents, for uh, helping me along the way through uh, this long journey. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you to the fans. Uh, I've only been here for one year. got to play in front of you for one year, but it was the best year of my life. Um, and that's because of you guys. You guys make it fun to come to the rink every weekend and play. Uh, I'd also like to thank the coaching staff and everyone uh, behind the scenes uh, for giving me this opportunity and also for uh, helping me out along the two years that I've been here. I also want to thank the boys. Uh, it's been an amazing year. It's definitely not over yet. Made a lot of friendships that I uh, definitely going to keep going after school. So thank you, fellas. See here. 
I uh, just want to take the time to tell you what this place means to me. I'll forever be grateful uh, and proud to have been able to represent our great school. Uh, I want to thank my family, uh, my mom, my dad, my brother Zach, Caroline for coming up. Uh, the way that you guys uh, show me unconditional love and sacrifice for me uh, is something that I will never take for granted, um, and I know that I truly wouldn't be here without you guys. I want to thank the coaching staff for giving me this opportunity to be able to come here at the University of Maine and, and spend the best four years of my life. Uh, Coach Red, Alf, Gite, um, and a special shout out to Jay Leach, who I believe is in the house tonight, uh, for, for recruiting me and giving me the opportunity to, to come here. I want to thank the entire staff here at UMaine, uh, the people behind the scenes that maybe don't get a lot of credit, but uh, I mean, we all know, all the guys know how much work you guys put in and how much you sacrifice for us. Uh, and we know that you know, none of what we do out here would be possible without you guys, so thank you. Uh, I want to thank the fans. This is truly the best place to play in college hockey. Uh, over the course of four years, I've had the privilege of playing in some different buildings, but uh, the energy in this place and, and the student section and uh, just, just the atmosphere that you guys create uh, night in and night out is something that is uh, truly special and, and something that I'm just so grateful for, so thank you for that. Uh, last and, and certainly not least, uh, I want to thank the boys. Um, you guys are the reason that this will probably be uh, you know, one of the hardest things to leave behind and, and why it'll be tough for sure. Uh, just the, the relationships that I've made and, and the friendships are something that um, I'll never forget. And I love each and every one of you, so thank you so much for being a part of my experience. Thank you. Hi, this is Mike Toole at ClearPoint Capital, and welcome to the Black Bear Money Minute. Today's topic is risk tolerance and what that means to you as an investor. Risk tolerance is the degree of uncertainty you're willing to take on to achieve potentially greater rewards in your financial planning. The different types of investor profile are aggressive, moderate, and conservative. Your risk tolerance is determined by a few factors, your investment goals, how much time you have to invest, and your other financial resources. Do you know your risk tolerance? If not, give us a call. We'll help you figure it out. Call us today at 207-307-7718. ClearPoint Capital and the Maine Black Bears. Now that's a winning combination.